Hello, everybody, and welcome back to some more Europa Universalis 4 Conquest of Paradise Bugged Edition with myself, Aruba, yeah. and Northern Lion. <laughs> What's up, gents? Oh, Con uh, yeah, you know, Conquest right. of Troubleshooting. Troubleshooting Edition, you. whatever you want to call it. Uh, I'm saying just get back into it. I'm saying yeah, start let's, it up. Let's okay. get started and maybe we're gonna, hang out on Speed 2. For yes, a while. and we're going to crank it down to Speed 2 for a little bit and uh, see if maybe we can fix the problem. We're not sure what's happening, so mm. yeah, fingers hope. crossed. Fingers crossed. So Anything. this fortified house building, uh, for it's a unique native building. It gives you plus ten to your force limit. Mm -hmm. That is crazy. Yeah, you can only have one. I built mine. Yeah. I, have, I have a force limit of twenty-one now. It can Jesus only be one. Uh, plus, it also stacks with the native idea that gives you plus thirty-three percent force limit modifier. Yeah. Well, I would uh, build it very I'm lucky. Right now. Very lucky that uh, this is a cooperative series mm. because between yeah. you not losing your colonies over and over and the fact that you built that building already, you could have probably like snowballed us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I've had I've had some uh, some bonuses. Or I have like an advantage for having played individually. What? Oh yeah. I just invited you to a federation and it it spammed me. It says you've declined like a thousand times. I had a little, I had like a little banner pop up. One second. But it wouldn't let me. It wouldn't let me click on it. I was like, "What is this? What I, is this? I, what I'm is just this?" Cooking through all these things. There's, there's like, I don't even know how many there are. There's. What? And it, and it says too bad. <laughs> <laughs> so I've had the opportunity to like invite people to join federations before. Is that solely as protection against like? Colonial nations, or is that some kind of like higher level alliance that I'm just I have never experienced before? I have no, I have fucking no idea. Uh, it, it's it, like I, okay, it's like it's like a defensive pact. So if you if okay. the three of us are in a, in a in a federation, and anyone from hmm. outside of the federation attacks us, we all protect each other. So I could do that, and I'm gonna send you one. Oh uh, well, why? Did that work? Whoa! I uh, see so okay. the same same thing just happened to you then. Yeah. <laughs> Too bad, 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 too bad. Yeah, there's Why at least, you... there's a lot of them. I don't know. It's weird. Why'd you swat the hornet's nest, man? I didn't know it was gonna do the same thing to me. All right, I'm good. I'm, I'm through them all. <laughs> all right, fuck federations. Let's just do it with each other anyway. Yeah, let's, I'm gonna let's try to let's try it while it's paused. Anyway. Maybe here. You guys are trying to desync your own games. <laughs> right. I sent you one, Matt. Uh, I didn't get anything. Northern line. I sent it to Northern line because I have. Oh, uh, okay. No, uh, did it nope, again. There you go. <laughs> The, you guys are the guys when, like, when somebody says, hey, don't jump on the elevator. It has, like, a reputation <laughs> for getting stuck. You, you wait till it like, gets, like, halfway up, and then you just take a little jump, right? That's, that's the vibe I'm getting right here. Uh, uh, on the bright side, I have a claim on Minnesota. Oh, really? Which doesn't mean anything because Minnesota's barren land anyway. Yeah, that's, that's pretty wild. I don't know. You're going to have to fight off some serious okay. bad dudes to get that land. Uh, I'm not worried about you it You could right attack now. it. Just attack them. No, just it, it, attack them. You can yeah. attack the natives, I guess. Attack, but. attack the dirt. That's just, <laughs> you, you just run in with my fucking hatchets and bows and just fire <laughs> things the native plants. Man, mm -hmm. we're doing like a race for for Minnesota because I want to swallow up the, your like Iowa. What the hell, uh, <laughs> Aruba? You sent me a diplomatic insult. <laughs> How dare you? You didn't want to join my federation, so <laughs> <laughs> screw you. Jesus. Hmm. I, was waiting nasty. For my, I was waiting for my settlers to finish up. I'm losing 0.5 gold a month right now. Ooh. 0.5? Wow. That's a lot, man. I'm losing it to army maintenance and co uh, colony maintenance. Colonies mm -hmm. are expensive. Yeah, yeah they we, are. We, Fucking 2.16, uh, what is that, a month? Jeez, yeah, we, I want to crank your colonial maintenance down. But we talked about it like in the last, in the last half video. Um, if you take it to, like say, 75% of the slider, then you get like 60% of the bonus for... Less than that worth of the cost. Does that make if that makes any sense? You get like the majority of the bonus. All right, I'm making money again now. I brought it down, about a quarter of the way. Yeah. See, now I also noticed I have an advantage over you two, which I didn't expect. I didn't realize until just now. If you press uh, go to the trade map mode. Yeah. Oh, you're so close to that uh, trade I, mode. I saw it actually. I'm in the Gulf of St. Lawrence, and I've discovered it. You guys are in Chesapeake Bay. So I'm I'm mm -hmm. actually getting a lot more money than you guys are because I have my merchant collecting from trade there. Yeah, that makes sense. So I get a 10% bonus to trade income, and I also get a ton of trade power because I have uh, my capital is in the node. 
Oh, so we, uh, Mathis and I actually have to discover the, the trade node for Chesapeake Bay. That's right. You've got to like search for it. And I think it's actually really far to the east. I think I can see yeah. it. Can I just you march can my men over there? Yeah, well, no, you have to actually, you can't explore Terra Incognita, so. Uh, yeah, you need to oh, uh, gotcha. explore, or Conquistador. Mm -hmm. So that's, You're uh, lucky, Aruba, my, my Casa's belly is, uh, gonna expire? expiring. Yeah. You're lucky. <laughs> <laughs> I Very can extremely I can lucky. I can just dissolve this alliance right now. I can turn this that's around. That's not necessary. <laughs> <laughs> We gotta remember, we. This is like a if I knew then what I know now type scenario. We're the New World nations. We know that uh, you know there's gonna be people with guns coming over the sea soon. We have now like the, our, like our seers tell us so. Exactly. Oh my God, what is this? A loan offer. We have to pay an interest of twenty yearly. Who's a client. <laughs> Aruma sent me a, a loan oh, offer. Okay. He offered to loan me one ducat. And <laughs> one very singular generous. ducat. And my interest payment was 20 ducats per year. Oh, good. 20%. 20 oh, sorry. Is that, when it says like 20.0, I thought it was like yeah. 20 ducats. <laughs> no, that would be, that would be a ripoff. <laughs> yeah, that my, would well, My offer was perfectly reasonable. <laughs> Why don't I just put that loan offer on like this credit card that I just got <laughs> from a stall at my university? <laughs> So can we, do you think, can we maybe try speed three? <laughs> it's so slow, there's nothing going, nothing happening. I don't know though, man, the don't mess with a good thing. Okay, all right. I'm just gonna keep on sending you loan offers, so I don't know what else to do. Don't send me any more loan, send it. <laughs> Start colonizing, colonize Ohio. You can't though, because it takes so long to uh, get a colony up. My chief, we were amused to discover that we now have our independence guaranteed by the Abenaki. <laughs> <laughs> I like how we were amused by it, we're like, ha <laughs> ha. They're so funny. Yeah, you so funny. <laughs> it's true. It's true. I am funny. I'm comical. So uh, here's the thing. Like the thing about the Indian play that I think is kind of strange is, on the one hand, there's a building that reduces your advisor cost by fifty percent, and you'd think, yeah. okay, I want to, I want to get that building, and then I want to get enough money that I can actually have some advisors and I can try to keep up with the Europeans. Mm -hmm. But th there's no point. Because as soon as the Europeans are next to you, you just press that uh, reform government button, and yeah, then you you instantly gain technology all the way up, so that you're you're two points below them on each tech group. Oh, really? Yeah, so if you're like level two and they're at level fifteen, now you're at level thirteen. That is really good, actually. So what's the point? There's no point in even mm -hmm. trying to tech up. You just wait. It's just a waiting game. Sit around. Stockpile That's your money. That's how it feels right now. For later. <laughs> I'm about to finish my first colony. You're a, yeah. It's amazing how fast like that advantage can compound for you because you started first, but also my colony's only like less than 20% of the way there. And I just realized that uh, I, I didn't have my settler <laughs> in Muskegee actually. He was hanging out, having a cup of Joe in Mobile. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was dumb. I still state. want. I still don't know what my resources are in my fucking Dakota and Padawan. That seems like Fuck. a bug. I mean, you should really find those by now. Unknown. We do not yet know what kind of resources province has. Of course. Actually, I don't know what's going on in in half of my provinces too. I, I know what's in Iowa though. That fish. Mm. Yeah, Maybe. Iowa, big uh, big fishing state. <laughs> if I remember correctly. <laughs> All right. Um, Perhaps your, your people are just lazy and they won't go exploring. <laughs> lazy people. Let's Actually, see. Actually, you know, Iowa does, in, in our game, looks like a great uh, fishing area. Well, yeah, in our fish, in our game, yeah. Exactly. Chesapeake <sighs> Bay is weird. Maybe in the next episode we'll try going up to... Uh, okay. We'll try awesome. going up to speed three. Because you're right, it is a little bit... There's not a whole lot going on right now. Where's the Chesapeake Bay? The, the most exciting part for me is when the month ticks over and I get to see if my colonist is going to get an extra 25 people or not. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, there's a chance. There's a 54% there's a chance my colony finishes in two weeks. Hey, pretty good. It's pretty exciting. All right, relatively speaking. This is the time we point out this is we're, we're playing for the long game right now. Yes. In, in some ways, we're subject to the, the whims of the AI. And Arumba said uh, that, well, you were saying off camera that in your single player game, it took them until 1600 to actually get to you. 
Yeah. That is crazy. Yeah, they're really bad at exploring, apparently. <laughs> so maybe you, if, if things start working out well for us, what we can do is start, like, expanding eastwards, and we'll go, so, like, say hello to them. Like, hey, we're over here. Yeah. <laughs> Please don't bother well, us. Well, it was the strangest thing, too. Uh, Portugal had Austria in a personal union. Like, Portugal Whoa. controlled Austria. That is unusual. The way that, that, that happens through, like, disputed succession, right? And then you have a royal marriage, and then there's a chance, if you have more prestige, that you'll put them in a personal union? E well, you actually have to claim them, or... It's possible you can inherit, yeah, if they have like, the same dynasty. Okay. Kind of... Kind of a slower, more luck-based thing. Yeah. Oh, you're okay. I was wondering, I thought like I lost vision on the map, but I see. How much are you making a month, Arumba, from trade? From trade? $1.13. Nice. It, that's actually really good. I'll make it 30 cents. Yeah, 21 cents over here. I don't even know if I can do anything to fix that. Like, I can't route anything, I don't think, right now. Oh, once you get uh, Conquistadors. Then you just walk to the the right side and you'll be okay. <laughs> or you can slowly colonize like one province at a time. I think I'll do that. I don't know about you guys are expanding eastwards. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to surround Cherokee. I think and you oh, know it's like why why pressure each other over there? We've got so much space to expand out here. Where's the Powhatan? Uh, they they migrated again. They're just below oh they're the way Cherokee. down there. Kansas. I think I have a. Uh, I can declare war on them. I have no cost of belly, but I have a mission to remove them from the map. You have no CB though. No, it was a timed one apparently. Uh, yeah, the you have to be very cautious, and this is something that may be obvious to people who are not me. But you have to be very cautious about when to declare war, because uh, if you declare war with no CB, you get an automatic minus two to, to stability, which has like seriously negative consequences. Yeah, I'm gonna cancel this mission and wait two years so I can take another one. It's five years, I think. Oh, mm -hmm. whatever. Five years. I'm I'm in year two of uh, my five year wait. Oh. <laughs> uh, let's see. Micmac doing good. I'm almost, I'm, almost, I'm more than halfway done with this uh. With this uh, colonization, though. That's really good. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of concerned though because you took the one. There's no there's nothing else for me to colonize. I can't reach anything else. So what about this, this, this is the end of my colonization? Uh, <laughs> sorry. I had a four base tax. I wanted it. Well, because we're cooperating, we could maybe do something where, like, you know, Mathis sells you Shawnee, and then you give him, like, one of your provinces, and then Mathis kind of has some expansion through, like, Fox and Ooh la la. Ooh la la. <laughs> exactly. I thought Fox was yours. You've tried to take Fox so many times. Yeah, but then I thought, out of the goodness of my heart, maybe I'll leave it for you. But also, like, I lost it. Like, I'll say more times. that you got destroyed every time you tried to take it, right? Yeah, you're not wrong. I just want more colonists. <laughs> Arumba, what do you think is better, better relations over time or diplomatic reputation? If if it's like equivalent values. It depends on your play style. Um, if you're being, if you have a lot of negative opinions, then the better relations over time is really good. Better relations over time only affects negative opinion scores. Okay. So if you have like 100 aggressive expansion, that will go away at a base of 2 per year. But if you gotcha. add bonus 100% better relations, it goes away at 4 per year. Okay. Where diplomatic reputation is more of a pro proactive approach, like getting alliances, getting royal marriages, getting um, annexation done. It increases annexation rate by 0.1 per month per dep All right. rep. I know way more about this game mathematically than I, sh than I should. Don't ask me questions. <laughs> I'm going to, like, overwhelm you with information. <laughs> well, it's I, a good thing, you know? <laughs> it's nice to have that kind of access to deeper insight. Yeah. Well, I basically, I'm almost to the point now where I, I feel comfortable with EU4 enough, like I did with CK2 when I first started making videos. Oh. Um, like, like, I played... I played base sciences. Yeah, I played uh, CK2 for, like, a year before I made a single video for YouTube. Wow. That's like where I am with CK2 now. <laughs> I've played CK2 for like 10 months. Yeah, and I've I'm made like there. 150 videos. A little bit longer <laughs> than you. Yeah, you, because we talked about it at PAX East and you, like I was just getting into it then. Yeah. And, and you definitely had more knowledge than I did. I'm grateful Native Shawnee have risen. Oh no, they've risen. Uh, you'll be fine. At least something happened. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <I'm... laughs> Man, they do a lot of damage. Uh, oh, you insulted me. 
<laughs> well, normally, like, if you have a native uprising and you're playing as, like, a European power, you just, like, it, it sounds like I'm meaning this to be offensive, but you just, like, shoot him. Or, <laughs> yeah. Like, do a cavalry charge and, like, destroy them. But here, because, you know, we are the natives, it's a little bit more of a fair fight, I, I think. I have a Costas Belly against uh, Arumba now, though. He insulted me. Yeah, he's he's brave like that. I don't know what, what he's thinking. <laughs> he's guaranteeing our independence, and he insulted us. <laughs> I don't know what else to do. <laughs> There's nothing else to do. It's like, it's, uh, it's <laughs> hey, there's Scotland. Scotland has got some trade power in my node. Oh. Transfer some that's... trade upstream, downstream. So apparently my... Uh, uh, well, if you click on the Gulf of St. Lawrence trade node, you'll oh, see... Oh, yeah, I see. Scotland's in there, and then you hover over the current trade power, you can see transfer some traders downstream plus 2.2. So that mm. lets us know... Well, we, we could already tell just from looking at the, the connections, but... Um, Scotland is in the trade node there, wh whichever one it is. It must be coming from... That, that was, is the that North, the... The North Sea. Yeah, Scotland is the North Sea, I, I believe. Anybody have any advisors yet? No, um, it, like a rumor was saying, it, it basically makes no sense to hire them. Yeah. For tech purposes, anyway. I guess you can still get, like, a shitty effect from the advisor. Yeah, like maybe maybe the morale of armies guy would make sense or something, but yeah, I'm just gonna keep boosting my stability. Trade range, maybe. Might as well. Are you you're spending your your diplo points? Or yeah, spending some diplomatic power. I still have 425. Can you after attack? It. Can you guys attack the Cherokee or something? Uh, I I can. I don't want to move my men out of the out of my colony. Yeah, that's the thing. I want my colony to still be here, and I'm like just getting back to like economic. Okayness. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I see. Well, we did. We didn't all luck into having a trade node right next to us on the Ooh. randomized new world, right? That's God. true. That's true. I did get fortunate there. Mm. Uh, I actually like. I will be able to attack Cherokee pretty soon. But I'll, uh, well, would you be able to send like your twelve or at least like half of them to join me? Probably all of them because the Cherokee are they were fairly strong last time we fought them. Well, to defend against the the natives, I would not really worry. I would only keep if I'm at full maintenance. I'd only keep two regiments behind. Okay, so you could send ten, mm -hmm. and I could send three for now. But by the time I declared war, I could probably uh, pull another one up. Maybe another two. I you know it also could just take like a ton of loans, but uh, it might have to wait until fourteen sixty five. Because I don't have uh, a Casas Belly, but also, uh, so th I've never seen this before, but I think my war exhaustion is so low that no Casas Belly is minus two, but war exhaustion is plus two? Or does that just mean that if I declare war, my war exhaustion goes up by two? It goes up by two. That's a new... Oh, that match. would be so much better if it was like the, the Norse in CK2, where if they don't declare war for a while, they start losing prestige. Mm-hmm. That'd be cool. Like, I wish it was... I wish my tribe was like, come on, look, we need to go to war. Like, we'll really, like, <laughs> unite the country. Or just murder people. Exactly. Hmm. Have you guys been building buildings that are not for economic use, except for the uh, manpower one? I did have, I have, I have a local def defense one. What buildings do I have here? Let's see. I built the 25% tax income one, the plus yeah. one income one. And that's yeah. it. Okay. That's where like, I'm at right now. Like, unless I'm desperate for manpower, I, I don't see any purpose to it. I mean... I have goods produced up by 25%. Yeah, that one makes sense, too. Yeah. Um, local production efficiency is up by 25%. Whatever that does. I need to start building some more men is the issue, I think. Still, you guys are both much larger than I am. You have five In, like, provinces. Geographically, five yeah. You have five provinces. I have three. I forced well, them at have, seven, though. Keep that in mind. I, I have four that. provinces and Somewhere. one colony that's fledgling. Yeah, but you still but make, you make you make money from the colony. Oh, that's true. <laughs> Actually, I do make I make two and a half uh, ducats monthly, or, or that that's annually, right? Uh, the annual income, yeah, on the building screen. Yeah. So I make two and a half ducats annually from that province. That's pretty good. From the colony, because it's. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. producing fur, I think. That's why. You can see what your colony's... Oh, my colony still doesn't know what it's producing. Mm. 
What's the best resource that we're likely to find in like what is basically North America for us? Is it fur? Fur is one of the better ones. Like okay. I think the highest base price is three gold, and fur is currently trading at four point six three. Oh wow! So it's yeah. it's pretty good. All right. Well, that's gonna wrap up this really exciting, riveting, and <laughs> nonstop episode of Europa Universalis for Conquest of Paradise. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're enjoying the series, dropping a like and a comment below helps perpetuate the series forward. And as always, in the description box below will be a link to both Arumba and Northern Lions channel to see their things from their perspective and the riveting things that are happening on their screen. And make sure you pop by tomorrow for more Europa Universalis. See you later. We can do Speed 3 next time. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> see you soon.